Have you ever thought about what you could do if you were given a chance to go back in time? In time to say, prepare yourselves for the internet. This is what's happening with quantum computing now, and you're given the opportunity to do something big about it. What we see in our daily lives and how we see things work differ greatly from the world of quantum. One thing that I want you to walk away today from this talk is that we might not be able to see quantum, but we will need quantum to understand the world we live in. Before you start to wander and start thinking about how abstract this idea can be, think about how we already use both classical and quantum physics in our everyday lives. We currently make use of information that is encoded into classical systems like our smartphones, our computers, through the internet, satellites, and the way we build these systems respond to our increasing needs to process data with quality and accuracy in real time. We benefit from classical computing every day. We process patterns from data that are stored and manipulated in systems. But there is a huge constraint with the compute power we have today the chips that run on your computers, smartphones, and electronics are becoming so small with increasing power that we'll soon be hitting a physical limit to building better and faster systems. Problems like designing new molecules in drug discovery or finding the most optimized route in logistics, problems that grow so large in size where our computers and even the world's fastest supercomputers are not able to solve and process this amount of information. We would need years or even a timeline that is beyond our lifetime to compute and find solutions to these problems. This is why we need an entirely different and new breed of computers to understand the complex world we live in and bring us past the limitations of classical computing we have today. Our world is ultimately made up of these small building blocks like electrons and the atoms we know of but do not see. And because the fundamental laws of physics is quantum mechanical, nature can only be explained at a very small scale with quantum, which governs the behavior of particles that are not visible to the human eye. We know a lot about classical bits where strings of information are processed on current classical computers in zeros and ones. Quantum computing uses quantum mechanical properties of superposition and entanglement to do the same, except using what we call qubits. And instead of processing things one after another, qubits can store and process a huge amount of information in combinations of multiple states at once. Imagine if you were given a problem with millions of different pathways of finding the solutions. And instead of solving this with one trial after another, as with classical bits, you can try out all possible pathways and perform the calculations simultaneously, saving both time and resources, as well as finding the results more accurately and effectively. One way we can fabricate these qubits is to have them manipulated in an isolated and coded dense space environment to maintain the superposition and entanglement properties, which are only available in a subatomic quantum space. And because of how we can use these properties to process information, potential speed ups, and solving problems that scale to exponentially large values, Quantum computers will be more powerful than anything possible with a classical computer. We've been hearing the word quantum a lot today. Well, of course, we are on the topic of quantum computing. Small scale, operating at extremely low temperatures to maintain quantum states, can't be observed with the visible eye. 
So how exactly will quantum computers impact our lives? To better understand this, the goal of quantum information is to find out what properties the information has and how these properties can be put into new and remarkable uses. The compute power will allow for new breakthroughs and advances across all industries, for example, in medicine, to diagnose illnesses in a quicker manner, developing faster search algorithms to direct resources effectively in, say, supply chain, in finance, to create machine learning models to optimize portfolios, and even understanding the nitrogen fixation process we, which we don't know about today better and create fertilizers, which currently uses an estimate of 1-2% to of the world's energy consumption to ultimately address sustainability and climate change. Or even looking into something that is a little closer to our hearts right now in light of this pandemic is that designing a drug re requires massive amounts of computational resources that would take more than the entire universe to perform on a classical computer and take millions or even billions of years to identify the right molecules, which in comparison could take just days or hours on a quantum computer. Quantum technology seems so distant a century ago where we are now very lucky to be in an era where the world's first quantum computer was put on the cloud for free public access in 2016 by IBM. And developments are happening so rapidly at a rate where we can possibly see advantages of quantum over classical in the next few years. With a roadmap of over 1,000 uh, qubit quantum computer in 2023, this will still be relatively small to tap into the full potential of quantum computing, but large enough to maintain the logical qubits for a significant milestone in developing a full-scale quantum computer. We're seeing billions of quantum circuits executed on the IBM Quantum Cloud around the world, an increasing number of papers being written, hundreds of university courses have included quantum in their education, and Fortune 500 companies, government, startups, academia, and national labs are working together to accelerate research, develop commercial applications, as well as educating and preparing the industry for this era. The biggest challenge in quantum computing right now is to build a fault-tolerant quantum computer to be able to solve all these problems. It's not just about how many qubits you can fit on a quantum computer. The system also has to take into account error correction to the noisy environment of these machines, to encode the data with sufficient fidelity, maintaining the isolated sub-zero temperatures, how the qubits are entangled, as well as many other factors contributing to the comp computational power of a quantum computer. This is why on top of the hardware the companies are already building, the software and algorithms developed to run circuits and explore applications have equal significance at this stage. There is a huge community contributing and working on exploring the different potential use cases, developing software, writing algorithms, error correcting methods, and different applications. What we need now is to hire talents from designing hardware to the developing software, and business leaders, leaders need to be prepared for this era. Quantum technologies are being invested heavily across the world. There will be solutions and use cases that we haven't thought of yet. This hopefully gives you an insight of where quantum is at now and how you can get started today to contribute and equip skills that you need for this exciting era. What will you do with quantum computers?